Welcome back to. S- oh, hang on. <laughs> it's a- I'm going to keep that in. Welcome back to Movement Strength and Play podcast. That is there because it's been a while since we did one. We took a couple of weeks off, but we are back with a relatively open and free flowing discussion. It's a podcast short. It's just me and Jacko. And we're going to talk about what happens when you redefine your impossible too much. Too much impossible. <laughs> There's a we'll fine line between the right amount of impossible redefining and sometimes you cross it and it can cause problems for you. So that's what we're going to talk about today because we know you're a hungry and ambitious group of people and you like to get out there and get after it and you want to achieve big things. But we need to make sure that sometimes it is done with a modicum of st- strategy and intelligence. I haven't used modicum today or for a while. That's a good word. I have no even idea what that means and I don't care. I just know it's a beautiful <laughs> noise. Um, so what uh, redefining impossible is about having a challenge and one thing that we know everyone responds well to is having a challenge and something that we've got coming up thanks to new sponsor of the movement strength and play podcast is spartan race now we've done a little bit of obstacle racing in the past um but tim you said you've been gagging to do a spartan race for a while so this actually has come organically but comes at potentially a perfect time Uh, well Perfect time. <laughs> well, <isn't, no>. it's, <laughs> it's the perfect opportunity, maybe not for the re- for the perfect time in terms of my level of preparedness, <clears throat> it's probably fair to say. I I enjoyed the obstacle course races that I've done because it's something a bit different and it's a bit of a laugh. Um, but the Spartan one is one of the more, let's say, aggressive versions of um, on the <laughs> obstacle course race spectrum. It involves spear throwing and it's a bit more strength orientated and i've been fancying a look at doing one of these for a while and haven't really got around to do it and then there was that thing called covid which kind of derailed all any any kind of crawling around in the mud um so now the opportunity has come up i am excited for this one i am definitely going to get it in my diary and i'm keen to do it and the opportunity is i believe jacko that the wonderful people listening to the podcast have an opportunity to come and join us Yes, so as part of the sponsorship of the podcast, there's a massive thank you. There's going to be, we're going to be at the Midlands Spartan Race on the 16th, 17th of July. And there is a series of different obstacle races that you can do. So there's a Sprint 5K, there's a Super 10K, and there's a Beast 21K. And I'm like, where's the marathon one? I'll do the, mar- I'll do the ultra marathon. There isn't one. Anyway, but there, we've got 50 free race places available for listeners of the podcast now that's exciting right tim that is uh, exciting 40 48 because mine's included in that and yours right or is it 15 well, i think well, i think ours are on top so we've got 50 to Ooh. come so if you would like to join us there is obviously a few little um bits and pieces that you need to do to just to get you free you can't you just be... give them away can yeah, we basically. so you need to be you need to be quick for starters uh, you might want to go on to race.spartan.com to see which see the details of those different races. The 17th, 16th, 17th of July is the Midlands one that we're doing. Now, um, you need to um, take a photo or video of you training for your Spartan race. So something to show that you actually mean business and you're not just you're not just here for the, the, the tagline. Tim ain't going to carry around this uh, this Spartan race. You've got to be doing it. Uh, doing it yourself and then what you need to do is share that on your instagram tagging spartan so at spartan and then also using the hashtag spartan race and then your final little thing to do is tag us at schoolcast x so we can see it and send that post to us in a dm we will then verify that you've passed all of those important steps and um uh, we will then send you that code that you will be able to use on the website race.spartan.com. You just need to be quick because those babies are going to go fast. If it goes really quick, there's going to have to be an adjudication process. So the more Spartan <laughs> yeah. you are in your video, the better. So don't play Clearly. it safe, people. <laughs> I want to see spears, scantily clad men and women <laughs> in gladiatorial type yeah. costumes. That's what I'm thinking. And I'll just remind people that um, some sort of like speedo wear is clearly a new age. <laughs> it's like a new age Spartan thing, isn't it? So, uh, do you think free. anyone's ever looked less Spartan than me? Do you think? I, I think look, me and you stood next to each other. You look way more Spartan than I do. Well, I think if I go hair down, speedos on, yeah. and, and wear my Batman cape, I think I'm 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 good to go. They'll be like Spartans. I think I'm organising it. <laughs> <laughs> Spart- you were, yeah, you're the mascot. Um, Spartans <laughs> didn't have hair gel, did they? They should have. 
Uh, I'm going to try and look more Spartan. That's my objective between now okay. and the 16th You've and 17th eight. of July. You've got a couple of months. So um, mm. just to yeah, get the, the details for that will be on the website as well, schoolsguardsense.com forward slash podcast. Um, but as I say, and the details are also in the show notes. So get yourself involved. And we look forward to seeing your best Spartan videos, pictures, training for your Spartan race. And we look forward to seeing you there. Amazing. Right. Let's talk about redefining your impossible too much. Well, no one's listening Roll. anymore, Tim. Everyone's gone off and started taking their pictures. They of them are in listening. Their speedos. And then, because <laughs> they're always like, I've got to do it quick. So maybe you've, you've paused, you've done your picture, you've tagged us, you've tagged Spartan, you've done hashtag Spartan race, you've sent us in a DM, you've got your code, you've booked your spot, and now you've pressed play again. Should Thank we you. carry on? Yeah. <laughs> Roll that jingle. Listen, players. <laughs> You're listening to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. So Tim, I want to, we're talking about challenges, we're talking about redefining the impossible and I want to take you on a little trip down memory lane on this one and hopefully pull out a few things uh, that we've learned along the way that will be useful advice for, for the listeners. Whether you've been at this game of calisthenics and training for a long time or whether you're new to it, hopefully there'll be a little bit of gold in there to, to help you along your way. And Do you want to, Jacko, just before you get yeah. into this, I'm just thinking, is it worth, for the for the newbies that may have not been here since we very heavily talked about Redefining Impossible, yes. contextualising and, and just giving some explanation as to what we mean by that yeah. phrase? Yes. So, uh, in a nutshell, when me and Tim first tried to do anything calisthenics-based, having watched a Frank Magiano video, thinking that guy looks cool <laughs> i want to be a little bit like him just a small percentage of him um but may- maybe with more hair uh, <laughs> also quite spartan he's quite spartan <laughs> oh, yeah yeah he's got a tan <laughs> he's, he's 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 very oily and um he, <laughs> oily. He, oil is like means he's like yeah he's like a, a sexy lad i was gonna say um, you need to qualify that because that's oh, you, hang on a minute you're getting you're getting into tricky waters now oily oh. in your de- in your definition when you say oily to me i think like shiny as in like you like baby oil to kind of make himself look more well Spartan. i think he probably in did oil. a little bit of that in 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 some of his videos, in some of those videos. Also, but, uh, oil would mean like a bit of a hunk okay that's a bit good so. we, yeah, the, are, now whilst we're for, def- for everyone like tim who's 40 40 and above um hunk is probably a word that will mean more to you. <laughs> i'm down with the kids because You're i'm still spunky. 30 now i'm i'm, I'm spunky. Not for long jacko <laughs> i know Couple more weeks what day are we on um it is 12th. exactly two weeks 28th isn't it is that right yeah what, your birthday i think well, you I can't do birthday. math 28th of may yeah but you uh, can't oh, do no, math it's yeah. So 16 days. Is that right? 16 days. 16 days. Crikey. Anyway, so Go on. Um, when we started, we were like two old rugby players that had various different shoulder injuries and blah, 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 all that jazz, like everyone else, come into this game with a load of baggage and basically couldn't do anything. <laughs> or anything of like, it couldn't do anything impressive. And whenever we tried to do something, whether it was a human flag or a planche or a muscle up or just something, you were like, this just feels impossible. And it was like, that was the, the, the beauty of it was immediately by feeling that it was like, yeah, but we've seen other, this other guy do it. So it must be possible. So it's like, it feels impossible, but I know that it isn't impossible because I've seen someone else do it. And I guess that just sparked something in our training that made things a little bit more interesting um, and exciting to, to go after a challenge that, genuinely felt impossible but you did believe you could do it otherwise you wouldn't bother training towards it um and you know for for a lot of us that i know we know a lot of people that listen to the podcast do a whole host of different training things as well um you know and and tim you've been doing more crossfit recently there might be a workout that would you see at the start it's not that it necessarily feels impossible like oh no this is gonna hurt or or whatever and i've signed up to an ultra marathon that definitely feels like it could be impossible but i'm trying to do it anyway and what we've learned along the way is that redefining impossible can at times be hugely motivating but other times potentially depending on our own situation and our own mindset 
can put undue pressure and stress on ourselves to achieve that impossible thing, particularly when often we get people like going, <laughs> I like it, I, I love it when people do this. It's like, I'm getting married on the 20 blah half of whatever month and da da da, and I want to do a human flag at my wedding. And it's like, that's cool. And now, you, but by and by setting a time frame, that's good when you talk about like goal setting, it should be time orientated and blah blah blah. But it puts some pressure on. If you're not making the progress you need to do and you're not gonna get you're not get there, then what tends to happen is we go harder at training, we spend less time recovering, and we end up digging ourselves into a bit of a hole. That's typically I think the the the, the bad the good side of it is it motivates us and can uh encourage us to do things we literally didn't think our body could do but the the double-edged sword the bad side of it is like when we push it too far and i know you'll have a lot to say about that tim bill uh a lot i don't yeah i'm gonna start talking and see where it goes um yeah. let me give you so there's an example on this one and i think uh i'm gonna try and contextualize with a little bit of of just training science when we start on a journey like this, depending on what our training background is like, we can go, I think, and, I, and this is going to be slightly crude for a minute, Jacko, but it's the best word that I can explain or phrase I can use. It's quite easy to go balls deep, if, I, if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> In uh... the, I, did, I did that with CrossFit, and I was like, I'm, I've started CrossFit. So I just did all of it. Like I was like, but that was part of the experiment. Right? I'm going to go all in. What happens is because it's a relatively new intense uh, training stimulus and there's a certain level of high intensity, it is very easy to break under those conditions. Now, with CrossFit, it was an interesting experiment because I entered that environment with a certain level of athleticism in that I can Olympic lift and I have got some strength training background yeah. and my gymnastic skills are obviously well honed from my calisthenics background. So you can actually enter a relatively good level from a competency perspective, but you have absolutely no right to be there mixing it up at the intensity that you think you're going to go and, and train at so you don't know how to pace stuff the you've never done those movements back to back before it's a complete like mixed modality type of training and that's a super new stimulus to respond yeah. to so it's all of a sudden you're heaping a load more fatigue loads of new kind of things onto the system and it is really easy in that situation to get a little bit excited and overload the system to a place where you have that kind of breakdown of tissue tolerance for whatever reason, and that's when injuries can set in. And, and this is kind of the reason I'm sharing that. Is it's, it's happened before in calisthenics as well. Remember when we both had golfer's elbow right on the early doors, start of, um, of calisthenics? We were doing so much kind of pulling stuff and getting into ring muscle-ups, and it was just too much too soon. So we were like super into kind of like, we want to go and tick these things off and achieve these goals that we set out that felt impossible. But there's the, the, the lesson, and this is from two guys who've, as Jacko says, on the wrong side of 35 um <laughs> where your body can't tolerate that kind of abuse for whatever reason or, or or stimulus let's say without you starting to think a little bit more about strategically um preparing and recovering from sessions and managing training load that is something that we do massively in sports science with an elite sport around just making sure that athletes are available for training and can train is to manage train load. And what we don't want to do is just do these massive kind of spikes and drops of new stimuluses, particularly when they're high intensity. So that's probably my first point, Jack. There's probably some stuff in there you would want yeah. to resonate with, I think. Yeah, um, I think that there's there's something there's something about understanding like we've done this a lot over over the years of the podcast from various different guests and then just our own sort of musings of like how we're getting on with things where you like go still can't bloody do that thing and i've left it alone then actually I come back to it after a few months it felt a bit better and it's like you get that you've, you've had that like um that demotivation by you sort of banging against a brick wall and you don't feel like you, you feel like you're missing something and you're chasing for some magic bullets and we've talked a lot about how they don't exist and then then you come back to something having worked on something else and it's like it starts to feel it better and you get invigorated for it again and when we when we understand like what sort of what type of person am i what what sort of gets me going i can start to understand like where on this line of like going too far or not going far enough am i likely to be and when you start to understand that, yeah. that yeah go on well just be that when, I was just when gonna we say, start to understand that uh, we've got a delay. Do you hear that delay? Then we should mm, be talking yeah. over each other. I was going to say, particularly, I think because you and I are the same, and a lot of people that, that do calisthenics with us, 
would probably describe themselves as type A people. They want to go after stuff and they're like mm-hmm. go-getters. And that combined with calisthenics, because it's like represents that, that tangible goal and you're a type A person, that can actually be a relatively sort of spicy combination. Yeah. And then if you add to the fact of like, what generally happens is like, you try really hard and then you try really hard and then you try really, really, really hard. And in the early days, you then, oh, now I can do a frog stand. Now I can do a handstand. Now I can do this. And you're like, okay, I was, I'm thinking of like Carol Dweck's book um, on, uh, I can't think of what the title of that book was called. Um, to do with mindset, I think it's literally just called mindset, isn't it? About like, um, what's the what's the term I'm looking for? Gratification like open mindset. No, like um, oh. growth yeah, mindset. Open mind. Growth mindset. Growth, growth mindset. mindset. And you've literally gone. You've taught yourself like, oh, I just worked really hard, and I kept turning up and doing doing it, and then I could do that thing. So then I want to now do um, a ring muscle up, and you're like, I just do that, do that, do that, do that. Because if I keep doing it and I keep working hard, then I'm going to get it. And it's like, oh, what happens? Now I've got golfer's elbow. That's what I've got. <laughs> and yeah, it's yeah. like, but but you're you're going through, you're following a process that worked for you before. But in the context of this, there's a few, there's there's potentially some subtle differences um, within it. Um, and I think that one of the one of the things I've experienced myself quite a lot is. This whole notion, it was one of the first things that Georgie, um, so Coach Georgie said to me, or I don't think she said it to me. I think I was, we were filming some content and it was the first thing she said in this video and I was stood behind the camera. So I felt like she was saying it to me. And it was this notion of like, you need to listen to your body. And she says, if it feels good, it feels, it's good. And if it feels bad, it's bad. And I was like, whoa what do you mean? <laughs> like, most, <Shazam>. I'm, <laughs> yeah, it's like most of the stuff I'm doing right now feels bad. <laughs> and like, yeah. I'd, I'd come from a, uh, a training background of, of rugby where you get bashed about a lot and like stuff just generally doesn't feel good. Um, and I think I'd conditioned my physical body and my mentality to like push through those things. And it's been a, a really long, I mean, it's, it's been nearly, is it 10 years since I played rugby or close to maybe it's nine years that it's been a long period of time where I've just been like undoing some of that messaging and signaling to go, well, why don't you listen to what your body's saying um, and and actually respond to that? And I think that mm. over the course of the last few years of the podcast, I'm thinking of people like Perry Nicholson um, from Stop Chasing Pain. Um, we've had a, a number of different um, guests that have talked about like injuries, talked about like understanding our body and, and opening up that sort of um, thing like Dr. Cobb from Z Health Performance is going like about how, how the neurology of it is so important. And you, and you start to open up wider and the answer to the question, like, why can't I do this thing yet? Why aren't I redefining my impossible? Now to me, isn't as simple as like, oh, it's this or that. It could be this whole range of things. And I'm trying to just um, enjoy more the process of, just seeing what my body wants to say to me. It, it's one of the things, and then I'll show up, but one of the things around the, lo- the long distance running that I've been doing, um, I think that started off for me as an experiment of like, actually rather than about running, it was about improving my breathing. And when you go and run, you notice your breathing way more and you rely on your breathing way more than when you just sat down doing nothing. You're still relying on your breathing, but it's not challenged, so it's easy and you don't like this, really think about it. Yeah. You're thinking about dynamic systems theory. We can all oh, that's tickling my fancy. <laughs> Go. But basic so it was like going out for a run was actually like going out to practice breathing, which might sound a bit weird for some people, but when you get into it it's quite nice. But anyway, the um as I, I noticed that like, you know, one of the first one of the first things that was a sign of me getting over my head injury that ended my rugby career in two thousand thirteen was like a year later I was finally able to run. And that was like an ama- it was amazing to be able to run and not get my symptoms. But I was so unfit and didn't like running. And, you know, I remember trying to run 5K and I just couldn't do it. Um, like physically, I probably could have, just mentally I couldn't do it. And then I've since like built up um, and set myself a challenge last year to run a marathon because I was like, I'd always wanted to. It's, one, it's like a bucket list thing for me of like, yeah, I've always wanted to be able to run a marathon. I don't know what like. And so I just did one. Or, or signed up for one which made me it's the same thing signed up for it challenge did it so it's like the spartan race if you've never done anything like that before but you like having something to work towards with an end date it's like well sign up to the 16th or 17th of july come join us in in july bag one of those free spaces but 
you've then got a little challenge that's going to remind you to keep working towards something. Anyway, so I've I've built up, and what I've found is just phenomenally interesting. And I still don't even I'm still unpicking. I've got no idea where it's going. But now it used to be like 10k used to feel hard, and as I got over like 15k, it'd be like miserable. And then like certain things in my body would start like cramping up or just feeling horrendous that never normally would. And like now I can run probably 30k and it feels okay and then it starts getting a bit messy towards the back end of, of, of a marathon which would be like 42k whatever and it's like my i've mentioned i think i mentioned this before but the my body will be the things that normally potentially are a little bit creaky have a little bit of issues around my knee from an old injury blah blah, blah like those things tend to be fine it tends to be like at the moment it's like my left adductor just cramping and going into like a spasm if I run like a marathon and it's like, what's going on there? Like I never, I would never n have known unless I went that distance that there was some, there's obviously some sort of issue going in there and, and then just trying to listen out rather than typically before for me, I used to get stressed by the feeling of pain or the feeling of injury or the worry of getting injured. Like when I played rugby, you didn't want to get injured because it stopped you playing. Like now I don't want to get injured because I want to be able to do stuff. But it would like stress me out. Whereas I think some of that process for me has been a case of going like, it's just, it's more of an experience of like, what's your body saying to you? And then start to, start to go in and pick that and play with it. And actually when I go through some certain move, lower body movements now, I can notice that left adductor that I wouldn't have previously done. And it's like, okay, actually... Maybe there is something there that I need to just do a little bit of work on. Um, but it was going under the radar for me. Um, mm. So, yeah. So let's spin this into some takeaways because there's probably a lot of people listening to this going, right, okay, I, I'm identifying with the fact that maybe I'm a bit more of a type A kind of person. Mm. I like going after these tangible goals. I'm doing things which feel difficult and challenging for me. So I'm kind of, I resonate with this redefining your impossible kind of idea. So from our experience of everything that we've done, what yeah. are your top tips for somebody who might be trying to redefine their impossible a little bit too much? So I'll give you, I'll give you two. Two that just straight spring to my Australia. And one is what I've already just said there, like listen to your body during that training process. Is it saying to you this is good and you're making progress? Is this saying to you like this is too much for me? And the way that it will say this just is too much for you, it's shouting at you ah and it's gonna hurt and we're not talking like so just pain from like training and you're creating some like doms and some muscles on us we're talking mm -hmm. about like this doesn't feel right for the people at the back jacko what happens if you do ignore that and you just keep going because i see this all the time oh yeah <laughs> how long have you been painful about two years what happens <laughs> people, it doesn't go away it just gets worse and then actually <laughs> not only that it like then starts i mean i'm, I'm te maybe technically not going to get this right but it's sort of getting embedded in your in your nervous system in a way. It's getting embedded 100%. in your movement patterns and how your brain like so. It Do might not even be injured anymore. Shoulder, yeah, yeah. No, that and that's that's a really good point. So, but people, particularly with the shoulder, if they get an injury, what they'll do is they'll go and guard it. So you yeah. start avoiding the position which hurts, and you don't necessarily do it as much with the lower body because you've kind of not got as many movement options. But you'll find that people will be like they won't reach in the same way or i don't know there might be a position yeah, where their toilet yeah. handle is and they'll press it differently even <laughs> though the injury is healed but their mind has gone well that's a pain thing so if you see, yeah. keep trading through those painful patterns you've got to then go and undo all of that kind of like compensatory movement that you're doing which is taking you further away from like optimal efficiency and to your example with running if you just go and run like a complete lemon like you're gonna and, and you don't do anything about it your efficiency goes down which puts stress on other structures which means that you end up in this kind of cumulative injury cycle yeah so some pain is okay it's a signal that you need to do something about it but just don't ignore the pain because it's it doesn't magically go away if you keep doing the same thing that you're doing which caused the pain in the first place yeah um, and my my other one then is you can't and don't try to do too many impossibles so yeah. it's like there's a there's just a, <laughs> there's just a there's just a volume of work that you can do and it can't all be at that the thing with trying to do something you've never done before is it's a personal best it's a pb it's never yeah. your body's never experienced it before your nervous system has never experienced it before it's like a huge new like 
thing for the body to do. And so that's a lot of stress on the sisters. And it's like, we just need to, I guess I'm, I'm this is for me, um, as much as saying it out loud for anyone else, we need to respect, we just need to respect that and respect our body. Um, it's knowing the time to shut the session down, I think, if you're going after yeah. so say, for example, you're working on bar muscle up. So I'm doing some, my bar, my bar muscle up was, uh, COVID was not kind to my bar muscle up, Jacko, um, yeah, yeah. because for two years, I don't know where to do any. <laughs> so I'm now back in the gym and I'm kind of working on building it back up again and it's starting to get there, but it's slow because what it feels like is the rest of the training that I'm doing, I'm generally carrying a certain level of fatigue. So I've not got that kind of like snappiness that I, I had before. But there's points now where I'm kind of like going, do two reps, do two more, do more. And there's, there comes a point where you're like, that's enough. Like, yeah. even though I feel like psychologically, I'm like, oh, it's not quite as good as I want it to be in this session. If I get two, three decent repetitions on a bounce and the next set doesn't feel great or I'm at the bottom of the bar going, oh, I don't know if this is going to be that good. The chances are it's going to be an ugly rep. At that point, shut it down. And as you say, you've gone and done something which is high neurological demand. So are you now going to go and do human flag training as well in that same session? Probably not a great idea. In that session, you go horizontal push and pull or some lower body stuff. Like you go and do some stuff yeah. which is of a, a lower neurological cost because you've already gone and absolutely rifled the system to a maximum level that day. So give it the time. Yeah, I've got one of the one of the woo woo one. Um, oh, <laughs> caught naturally. I, don't, naturally. I was hoping it was going <laughs> to surprise you to start with this one. Come on then. Uh, you're, 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 you know what it is. You're like, it's just like, just ask us, like, ask yourself the why question, like why. And I think the thing is going like, it. Uh, we're on board with it. Like we're we're doing it. Um, I'm not trying to dismiss it at all. But like, it's you need to be happy whilst you can't do it then you can be happy when you can do it as well, rather than thinking it's going to, oh, when I can do a muscle-up, I'm going to be well stoked. And you will be stoked when you do it. Like Everyone's going to be like super pumped for it. But, but at that point, you'll go home, though. You'll tell your partner or whatever. And like, yeah. Muscle-ups then, and go, oh, okay, cool. Your missus like, what's well, that? Not <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't look big. No, you don't look big. Like, come actually, on. Same. <laughs> actually, look a bit smaller. <laughs> <laughs> have, yeah. have you been well, trading? <laughs> Like, why am I doing this? I'm trying to imprint. No, I don't know. But like, it is, it is. I'm just getting more, I don't know, some stuff going on in my brain that's like, just uh, trying to explore, like, what is it that's like, what is it? That, I just think it's interesting to actually try and answer those some of those questions. Like, what is it that's like, what is it that's exploring you? Or what is it that you think you're trying to do or whatever? Like, I'm not saying I've got the answers. Like, why do I want to do that ultra marathon around leading Wales? Um I don't know, but I'm open to I'm That's open to exploring it. Podcast for another day, that one, Jack. Let's not yeah. go down that rabbit hole. Yeah. I'm going to offer one because then we've got yeah. three three and a woo-woo just to kind of wrap it up, and then <laughs> I'll give my last one. My, my number one advice in this one is just play the long game. So we often – it goes, it links in a little bit with your why, Jacko, about going, what, what difference does it make if you do it in six months or, or six weeks? Zero. Like really, for most people, we take a far too short term approach of going, I've set out this honest goal now. I've got to achieve this thing as quickly as possible. So I'm going to throw the kitchen sink at it. <laughs> like I, we've done that. And I know what happens. Like you don't really get you don't get the results that you're hoping for, especially if you're doing other things. And where people in our audience and I'm having this conversation a lot with people is your I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak direct to the audience now, Jack. This is not to you. Yeah. You don't respect the rest of the stuff that you've got going on in your life. So lots of people that listen to this um, podcast have got um, type A jobs. Like they've got pressures at work. They've got pressures at home. They've got, they don't necessarily sleep optimally. Like there's all this stuff going on. So when you are then going to go and load yourself up with a, a sort of pretty high intensity training session, like you can't have all of these things on at the same time and expect the body just to kind of go, yeah, sweet, I can respond like you were 18. Well, I promise you, you didn't have the stresses in your life that you do at 35 or 40 years old that you did when you're 18. I guarantee you that. You're not sleeping as well. Um, so take the long, take a longer term approach. Take it steady. Like whether you do it in a year or two years, like it's the the point of this thing is and the why of being, why are you doing it? Well, it's largely going to be about fulfillment because you enjoy the process. It's not to do with the muscle up or the handstand or whatever else you're doing why are you going to go and do a spartan race well i actually want to go to just kind of have a bit of fun it's a bit different it's an experience 
And I think training is an experience and it's not one that we're going to tick off and go, I've completed that now. I don't need to train anymore. It's going to be a, something that you can learn along the way. So just chip away at this sort of stuff and just like, just relax with it a little bit. I think we can put far too much pressure on ourselves. Just take it easy. It will happen in its own time if you consistently turn up and do the work and give yourself time to recover. I think people will get much better results if they realize the power of actually realizing that recovery is a thing and if you do it consistently, you can actually do more, which means in the short term, you might not feel like you're doing as much or getting as far, but over the longer period of time, you'll find actually you're going to move much quicker. Yeah. No, love it. I think that that's, you said it, what you said you weren't speaking to me, you were speaking to the audience, but I was receiving it and letting that wash over <laughs> me. Um, this so is, these are like therapy. We just talk about what our own yeah, minds yeah. are doing whilst we're training and we share it with other people. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so let's uh, bring in that bring in that home then with uh, with those with those takeaway messages. One thing uh, that I just think would be useful for you to share because um, let's be honest, when we're talking about redefine or impossible, we're talking about mainly hard upper body things. We talked about handstands, human flags, muscle ups, and the the the, the, the biggest area of injury that people are going to get is the shoulders. And you're doing some great work in helping people with that. If just do you want to just give an opportunity to just let people know what they can potentially do or what they should look at for that? Uh, yeah, for sure. The, so the, with calisthenics, obviously we are doing a huge amount of load through the upper body and oftentimes people are finding that they're getting these niggly kind of annoying problems. It's largely, let's say that um, it's not completely derailed your training so that you are at physio getting fixed up because you're in a massive amount of pain. Um, oftentimes people will have sort of these like grumbling complaints which just don't really go away. Um, so the easiest thing you can do if you want to find out about that is you can have a look at dynamicshoulders.com and you can book in a free call and you can come and have a chat with me and find out. And Because it's very difficult, shoulders complicated. So yeah. I'm not going to give like spot on advice in this one and go this is definitely what you need to do. But there's yeah. a number of different solutions, many of which could be I can direct you to if you want to come and have a quick chat. So we can jump on a call, have a phone call and um, we can explore what's going on with your shoulders and effectively implement some upgrades for you so you can do the things you want to do cool all right we'll put a link in the show notes for dynamicshows.com as well thank you all and uh yeah that's all we've got time for this or all, all that we need to cover in this session deep good unscripted raw liked it like spartan <laughs> like the spartan we'll see you at the spartan <laughs> race for 50 of well obviously if you can also just buy your ticket. You don't have to have a free one, but um, there's 50 of those free spaces, Memo, so make sure you do bag one of those babies. Yeah, I'm excited for that one. Right, guys, keep exploring your physical potential with movement, strength, and play. And until next week, class dismissed. <laughs>